I was working at a financial company in New York City, surrounded by very intelligent people, and had a brilliant boss whom I greatly admired. I went to my boss and told him that I was going to start a company selling books on the internet. He took me for a long walk in Central Park, listened carefully to what I had to say, and finally said, that sounds like a really good idea, but it would be an even better idea for someone who doesn't have a good job. You can have a job, or you can have a career, or you can have a calling. And if you somehow find a calling, you've hit the jackpot because that's the big deal. I sought out investors who believed in me, and in that way, I was able to put my ideas into play. I'm going to start a bookstore in my garage, I'm going to put it online, people will buy online, and I'll ship from my garage. But if you invest in me, someday I'll be the richest man in the world and make over $100 billion. First of all, there was no such thing as $100 billion 25 years ago. Statistically, it didn't exist. Countries didn't have a national debt of $100 billion. But even so, at the age of 26, Jeff had already set his mind on becoming the richest man in the world because he had a garage and the internet. That was his truth. Seen from that perspective, it was indeed a tough choice. But in the end, I decided I had to try. I didn't think I would regret trying and failing, and I suspected I would always be haunted by a decision not to try. After much consideration, I chose the less secure path to pursue my passion, and I am proud of that choice. When I was a child, I was a garage inventor. I invented a gate closer with tires filled with cement, a solar stove that didn't work very well with an umbrella, and an aluminum foil pan, and pranks alarms for my brothers. I always wanted to be an inventor, and she wanted me to follow my passion. There's a military phrase that I especially love, which says, slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. I've seen this in every endeavor I've been in. This is the kind of thing that really allows you to make progress. You get certain gifts in life, and you want to make the most of them. But I think my advice about adversity and success would be to take pride not in your gifts, but in your hard work and your choices. So, you can have the kinds of gifts you have. You know, you can. If you're really good at math, it might come very easy to you. That's a kind of gift. But practicing that math and taking it to the next level can be very challenging and difficult, requiring a lot of effort. That's a choice. You can't really take pride in your gifts because they were given to you. You can be grateful for them and thankful for them, but your choices are what really matter. You choose to work hard. You choose to do hard things. Those are choices you can take pride in. Everyone in this room has many gifts, and you can only really take pride in your choices because those are the things you act on. One of the most important choices each of us has is to choose a life of ease and comfort or a life of service and adventure. When you're 80 years old, which of these things do you think you'll be prouder of? you'll be prouder of having chosen a life of service and adventure. There has never been a better time to be alive. The amount of inspiration the world generates is amazing, and the amount of change, invention, and opportunity is insane. When I think about success and innovation, I firmly believe it all starts with passion and persistence. The world is an incredible place, full of unexplored opportunities, and each of us has the power to shape our destiny. Remember, Success doesn't happen overnight. Amazon, which I founded in a garage, took years to become what it is today. But the key is never giving up, even in the face of adversity. Failure is not an obstacle, but an opportunity to learn. When I started Amazon.com with a $300,000 loan from my parents, I calculated a 70% probability of failure. However, I knew that taking that risk was necessary, even if it was scary. It's a fundamental component of prosperity and success in our lives. Today, after much sacrifice and discipline, Amazon.com is becoming the wealthiest business in the world. Only 1% of people are willing to do this for their success. Only 1%. There are two definitive, fundamental, and transcendent secrets to success in any area of life, whether financial, personal, or in business. I'm talking about those businesses that will truly make you a millionaire. These two principles are taking action and learning. Taking action means putting your ideas into motion. It means not giving up. The only way to learn is to read and read. So you need to understand that not giving up means not listening to those internal saboteurs, the little voice inside that says you're tired, 
that you'll never make it. If you can overcome that voice, you'll learn not to give up when things get tough in your life. The reason why reading is so important is that many people have lived before us, and there's no new problem that someone hasn't faced and written about. Don't listen when the little voice says you can't do it. Prove it wrong. Reading is vital and important. Through it, you'll learn from others' mistakes and avoid making them. Nowadays, the available information is even greater thanks to the internet, so it's up to you whether you'll use it to waste time or to grow as a person. They say that today, anyone has more information at their fingertips thanks to a smartphone than Bill Clinton had during his time as President of the United States, with all the intelligence services at his disposal. Information is power, and it's up to you to use it to become a failure or unleash the genius within you. Some may already have the habit of reading, and as a result, their mindset will increasingly align with the desire for wealth and success that we all aspire to. For those who don't yet have the habit of reading and learning, just like with exercise, sometimes all it takes is to start and not give up. Get used to reading at least 20 to 30 minutes every day, and above all, seek out the genres that interest you the most, and then move on to personal and financial development topics that will help you become the best version of yourself. Big things start small. The tallest oak starts as a seed. Even the largest empire starts as a simple thought in someone's mind. Furthermore, never underestimate the value of long-term thinking. Building something truly revolutionary requires vision and patience. Those who aren't afraid to fail often achieve the greatest successes. Remember, the best ideas are often the boldest. Remember that success is not only measured by material wealth, but by the contribution we make to the world. Be a builder, not a cynic. Believe in yourself, your vision, and the power of perseverance. Step out of your comfort zone, dare to dream big and make it happen. The world is waiting to be transformed by those who have the courage to forge ahead, face challenges, and make a difference. Be relentless in your pursuit of success, and you'll reach heights you never imagined. The life you create from scratch on your own begins now. How will you use your gifts? What choices will you make? Will inertia be your guide, or will you follow your passions? Will you follow dogma or be original? Will you choose a life of ease or a life of service and adventure? Will you be deterred by criticism or follow your convictions? Will you pretend to be right when you're wrong, or will you apologize? Will you protect your heart against rejection, or will you act when you fall in love? Will you play it safe or be a little bold? When the going gets tough, will you give up? or will you be relentless? Will you be a cynic or will you be a builder? Will you be clever at the expense of others or will you be kind? Whenever you discover a way to provide tools and services that empower others to use their creativity, you are really heading in the right direction. You know, you're very lucky if you have a career. Many people end up with a job. If you don't love what you do, you will never excel at it. Jules Verne, Mark Twain, Galileo, Newton, all the curious from the ages would have wanted to be alive, most of all, right now. As a civilization, we will have so many gifts, just as you as individuals have so many individual gifts as you sit before me. How will you use these gifts? And will you take pride in your gifts or pride in your choices? In the end, we are our choices. Build yourself a great story. Thank you and good luck.